It's your girl, Matt Cox from MA Couture Crafting. We are hanging out here at Sewing Art Center, which is where I bought all the fabric for this quilt. You guys chose which colors to use. You guys chose the things and I put it together. And today, this book is dropping. This is the Make It Easy by Fabric Cafe 3 Yard Quilt Book. They sent it to me early, so I was able to actually do a quilt that was just gonna drop the same day that this book drops, which is today. I'm obsessed with it. I did a little zhuzh. You guys know I like to zhuzh up a three yard quilt. And I did it by putting in some of these amazing applique designs to just give it a little something. I was not originally excited about this brown color that you guys chose, but it came out absolutely beautifully. I think this might be my favorite three, three yard quilt that I've ever done, maybe. You guys check out the Make, Make It Easy book. You guys can get it over at Fabric Cafe. All right, thanks, bye-bye. I want to run you through this process really quickly so I have some fabric back here and I have it's actually been pressed to SF 101 and then I have some tear away then I put this in the machine and it stitched out that line I took my piece that I cut with my Cricut and plopped it right in there and then hit it with this little guy which I love for this and I pressed it because that has some um, heat uh, some heat and bond on the back with the purple the purple heat and bond on the back of it and I press it so now it won't move and it will stay in place while the next part stitches it down and then we can get to going to doing the embroidery design around it so this is just a quick run through of how this embroidery works so here's my screen it's already stitched out a little bit of the placement line so we're here and now we're gonna stitch down the tack down and then we're gonna go it doesn't have too many thread changes, so that's pleasant because I'm using my single needle for whatever reason. So now we're just going to hit the go button and it will stitch down this applique, which is being held down by heat and bond, so it's not going to move. And this is what the placement and the tack down stitches look like before we move on to the white layer. So the white layer stitch, and now we have the brown layer stitching. Isn't it pretty? New book alert, make it easy with three yard quilts. I love an easy quilt, especially one that really makes it look like you are doing something big with it, you know? I'm so thankful that they gave me this book early so that I could debut my quilt when this one releases. I'm thinking that's great for the uh, quilty economy, right? So we've got this one here called Panache, and that's the one that we're going to do today. There are several different um, variations that are kind of cool, like Affinity is a really good one. Elemental can be a good one. I mean, they're all cool, but those are some standouts in this particular book for me. But Panache is what we're going to work on today. And we're going to use some of this Rashida fabric um, from Ruby Star. I think they're all Rashida fabrics. Um, this one is. And then we've got our fabric number three. And yeah, actually, yeah, I think it is all. This is Speckled. This is her, um, I think this is called Leaping Ladies. And that is what inspired all of this because I saw the OESD pattern. And um, it was an embroidery pattern of these ladies, and I just thought they looked amazing. And it inspired me to want to use them for this quilt book, and it all just kind of worked out. So I'm going to give this one a zhuzh. Our fabric number one. Let's do it. All right. So our fabric number one is actually going to be the speckled. We're going to do something fun with it. If you've been following along, we are going to drop some embroidery onto this fabric. Our fabric number two is going to be the ladies. They are going to be our second dairy focus fabric. And then our number three, this was a viewer's choice. You guys chose this chocolatey brown here um, with this pink going through it. So I hope it all comes together beautifully. Let's get started. Let's cut this puppy out and then we'll I'll show you how it all comes together. So for cutting out the three yard quilt the way that I did it, um, I only needed to cut out this and this. Just because I did all that embroidery, which actually caused me to have to buy two more yards of fabric due to the hoop size that these ladies required, which is fine, not a big deal. But now I'm going to cut these all down to size, 
which is going to be fun. I love to fussy cut stuff. So I'm going to show you how to do that. This is my fussy cut ruler and I love it to death. It's not really my fussy cut ruler. It's just my square ruler, but I use it for all my fussy cutting needs. So what I do is find the dimensions that I need and I tape them off the best I can. It just gives me some place that I can really see where it goes. And I just keep reusing the same tape until it gives out on me. It might be today. There we go. Now, I can't give you the dimensions of what it is that we're doing. You need to buy the book, buy the pattern. This is not mine to give away. But I will show you what it is I'm doing. So I'm just going to put this tape down here and mark the dimensions of the, the, the shape that I'm trying to cut. Now, after I mark off what I need, uh, length and height, I go on ahead and find center and I just put this little GE Designs uh, repositionable sticker right there and I'm good to go. Now I'm going to grab one of these designs. Let's grab this one. She looks like she is nice and stabilized. Like I don't need to cut her too much. And really, I just want to kind of find where center is going to be on her, where she looks good. I want to be sure that I've got at least a quarter inch on all sides, not touching anything. And then we are going to just cut. I'm not being extremely fussy about it. I'm just trying to make sure she looks good and centered in this block. Again, not being too fussy. I can see that I have an inch above her hands right here. And then where her foot ends, I have a little bit more than an inch. So I can give it a little something there. And to her knee, I have about an inch right there. And then here I have about an inch. And so I could, I could just take this cut right here. No need to be, again, no need to be super fussy. I'm just trying to get her somewhat centered. There's a lot of movement happening here. And you can, of course, do all the, the you know, measuring her and figuring out exactly where center is. But this should be a light and fun and, and fluffy and easy kind of quilt. So whatever your style is, you do that. Once you feel good about your placement, you're going to hold her down. And we are going to cut up this way. And then we're going to cut across here. You can take this off if you want. Now, this is where you use your L that you have done right here. We are going to lift it up, flip it around, and we're going to sit the edge that we just cut right in that L. So you're going to line it up there. And we are going to line it up here at the bottom. And when you see that it's all lined up, you take your next two cuts. And that is how I fussy cut. And fussy cut just means I'm being fussy about the placement of this. And there we have what I need. Lovely. And so now I need 12 of these. Easy work. So for this one, she, she stretches quite a bit across that block, but I'm not scared. I know that she fits within it. I'm just trying to make sure that I've got my quarter inch right here and a quarter inch there, and I've got it. And then we can figure out top and bottom. It looks like I can bring this down a little bit uh, about right here. But we're just making sure that knee and this hand are outside of that quarter inch and it's going to be tight but I'm not worried about it it'll be fine so all of our girls are cut down and they look just beautiful I am so excited about all of these designs um, I can see all different kinds of things to do with them I don't think this will be the only time that I use them they're just such a, a beautiful they're, I mean, I, when I saw them in the booth, if you guys haven't done so already, check out that video I did, a walkthrough of QuiltCon, because OESD was there, and that's where I got sold on these girls. So that's that part there, and that's everything for number one. 
So here are all the pieces that we're going to need to put this together. It's going to be probably pretty quick and easy. This is a fabric two. You've got some larger strips. You've got some strips for strip assembly. We have our focus blocks, our secondary focus blocks, and then our trimming kind of thing here. And I think, again, it's going to go really nice and easy. So I'm going to grab these here. And we're going to put these to the side. I know that's for a border. And I know that this strip here is also for the borders. And we're going to focus on our strip assembly next. So all of these are going to need a strip sewn on either side. And we have a partial strip assembly there. So I'm going to show you all of these are going to need a strip on either side. So for here, we're going to take these partial strips and we're going to sew one on this side and the other side, on both sides. This one goes here, this one goes here, right sides together. Let's take it over to the sewing machine and sew it down. So after you sew these together, these strips here, we're gonna just press it out and open up these seams. That's just the best way to do three yard quilts. Just open these seams up. You all know that this is my favorite tool to use to open up seams. And now we know this is Sawyer Creek Artistry's tool. We found him at QuiltCon and we use this just to go over it the first before we hit it with the iron. Sometimes if you don't have an iron near, you can just use this just to do a quick, if you're like foundation piecing and you just need a quick finger press or something, it's great. But it makes going over it with an iron so much easier. Just open those seams right up. And then I flip mine over and give it a nice hard press. And there we have what we need. Those are all the blocks, strip set sewn together. And I am really smoothing this out with my iron. I am not necessarily pressing this. I am pushing this where I want it to be. I want this to be as flat as I can get it. And it looks good. And then when we subcut, we're going to get some crispiness. Now that we have all of our strip sets, now it's time to subcut. We are going to subcut these two different than these two here. Let's do it. Remember, on most occasions, when you do a partial strip with Fabric Cafe, you're going to need the whole partial strip. So don't, don't try to freshen up edges and all that. If you need to and you can, cut a little bit more. And for this pattern, you can <laughs> cut a little bit more than what's suggested because you don't have any room to waste, usually. We are going to make our first cut here. And this is what we're looking for. That's what we need. And let's do another one. And then we're going to cut up all of the strips. And I'm using my Quilter Select. What is this? 12 by two and a half inch ruler to do this one. Love my Quilter Select rulers. So... These are all done here. Love that. And those will go on either side, on both sides of the, um, the block, our focus block. So now we've got to subcut these guys. 
Boy, this is coming out so beautifully. I can't, I was not a fan of this brown fabric because I'm not a brown girl and I'm not a pink girl. But when I tell you this looks so good, my mother walked in and was like, oh my goodness. I was like, I know, right? Who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk it? So let's subcut this one. I need a better ruler, a bigger ruler, not a better one. I was about to toss this and then I remembered we do not... Ruby Star Society, this is like gold somewhere. So now we are subcutting our number two fabric with the number three borders, and it's just looking absolutely beautiful. Just, just striking, guys. This was a good, this was a really good fabric pull. I'm so pleased. I'm even tickled by the fact that her head got cut off and you just see her body right there. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's cool. You got some hands and stuff. Don't freak out. It's cool. All right, let's keep going. I've got to subcut all of this. I've decided that I'm going to work on these guys first. So to finish this block, you are going to take your strip and you're going to sew on one side all the way down and then you're going to cut it and then you're going to sew on the other side and that's going to make this block. So right here you have sewn down perfect. Now we're just going to trim it even and take it and put it on the other side right sides together and sew down the side too. So this is what we're after. They look so good. And I've just sewn these to either side. And I've decided I'm gonna press these inward. I know I was just talking about pressing everything open and that is probably best practice. I don't know how this is gonna work out, but I'm pretty sure that I figured out that these can be pressed inward. My preference is not to press open, I just, think it's easier with nesting seams for three yard quilts, which is what they suggest you do. So now I'm just going to iron it nice and flat. And then we have a beautiful block. Now let's put together the other one. So for these blocks, all you're gonna do is grab your side strips and grab one of the girls. And I'm gonna put a side strip on this side and one on this side. And we are going to sew them to both sides and then I'm gonna press them this way. Now we need to press this girl because we've sewn both of the sides on the, on the sides. And so I'm just gonna hit this and set those seams. And then I am going to roll this back and press it and press it. Then I'm going to do the same thing on this side roll it back and press she looks good now I'm going to take all my girls and sort them into because each one should have two of these colorways so there's going to be two purple girls and then I'm going to lay them out and then we can roll this up and we are cooking with gas so it's gonna be every other block. It'll be one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these in the rows. But first I need to figure out the colorway, the color, how the colors are gonna lay out. So if you look at this layout, this is what we're going for. You can see that that's where the girls are gonna go. And I have actually decided to do something nobody probably would do, but I'm gonna put the same color girl in the same row. So this will be purple, this will be the cream, this will be the yellow or whatever. And it should work out because the girls, even though they're the same colorway, they're in different poses. And so if I keep them kind of spread out, this should work out. So that's what we're going to go for. 
Um, I don't know which row is going to be which. I don't, I don't really care. Um, I'm not going to put too much into this. We're just going to lay them out and go for it. So this is what I mean. Two girls are going to go. And I know that this is going to be row one because I really like purple. So we're just going to start it off with purple. We're going to draw, draw our eye right up to the top. And I am loving this. I had no idea I was going to like this as much as I do with this brown in here. I thought you guys were trying to kill me picking brown. But I think this looks absolutely beautiful. And we haven't even really cooked it up yet. So we're going to start with two purples. And then I'll do the rest. And then we'll sew those rows together. So this row is all sewn together and then after I finish sewing a row together I usually put a little clip on the direction that I'm going to sew the seams. So this seam is going to go that way, that way, that way and then after I finish this row they're all going to go that way so I'll put a little clippy right here so that way when I take it to the ironing board I just know that they're going in opposite directions. So now that we have our rows together let's put our rows together <laughs> so now that they're these are all sewn let's put these together and the way that I'm going to do that is remember I have these clips on there and they've been pressed in opposite directions I'm just going to put right sides together and I'm going to go through and nest and nest and nest and it should all work out because we pressed the the square blocks we pressed them inward and we took these and we pressed them outward I think we've got action and then we've gone the other direction. So we should nest completely. This is going to come together beautifully and quickly. Well, the innards are all sewn together. That was, even with all the pinning that I did to make sure that these intersections all came together, it was just a, such a quick sew. Why is this the coolest quilt? You guys, you told me to pick this colorway and I was so skeptical. Oh, brown? I am obsessed with this. I love that I kept the girls in the same row. I This is probably one of my favorite three-yard quilt kits that I've, uh, three-yard quilts that I've ever done. Ever, ever, ever. Possibly. I am just over here in awe at how much I'm enjoying the innards of that quilt. I just, I'm telling you, it's so good. Now I'm going to grab all of the border strips that I need. And remember, this is Ruby Star, so it's got that really deep, um, selvage and I'm just going to trim them all really quickly and then I'm going to sew them all end to end so this is all the borders it's this border which is my first border and my second border I'm going to knock that out real quick so first border is on we just need to put on our next border now for this border, I want to show you guys something. Yes, I just cut it and sewed it together, but I wanted to make sure that these ladies were all facing the same direction, and they are. So they're all facing me. And I'd like them to go on there like this and be facing outward. So everybody's feet should be this way all around the quilt. That's not something you have to do. It's not a huge deal, but we're doing it. So I'm just going to take this and measure it to the end of this quilt, then mark it, cut it, and sew it on. Do all of them. You're going to do all one color border and then all one the next color border. The next time you see this quilt, it will be all done.